Good afternoon. Welcome to my day broadcast. Um, my name is Barry Selby, and for those who don't know me, let me introduce myself by what I'm about, and that might help you understand what this talk's going to be about. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business, and I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's topic is, it may become a series where it's going. It started on, what's today, Sunday, Monday. On Saturday I talked about red flags being a challenge in relationships. And Sunday I did a red flag test, which was um, travel together. And you have to watch that broadcast from yesterday to know what it's about. In fact, in that, book, in that broadcast I talked about my book, which I'm not going to talk about here, unless it comes up. But today's topic is another one about red flag testing. And I mean the sense that in relationships, red flags, to give you a quick, like, um, cliff notes. Let me, sorry, let me back up a second. This is number 340, by the way, in my ongoing series of talks of messages from the masculine, messages from the masculine, messages from the masculine to inspire the feminine heart, because these are every day. So I do a daily talk, I do a daily talk every day. That makes sense. I do a talk every day about love and relationships, masculine, feminine, polarity, purpose, mission, authenticity, genuineness, all these sorts of things. And today's is one of those topics, and it is actually, in a way, part three. Because I talked about on Saturday about red flags in general, and yesterday I gave an example of a red flag test, which is how things are when you travel together. Watch that one, it was kind of interesting. This one, number 340, um, which means yesterday was 339, the one before that was 338. This one is, um, do they respect you? Let's have some fun, shall we? So, first of all, let's start with the first date. Yes, the first date. Here's some keys. Here's some tips. If... Uh, contextualize. I need to context this a little bit. Okay, let me rewind just slightly. My idea of a first date is actually a pre-date, where I recommend, which, and that's always supposed to be before, but so ladies, listen up. If you're meeting a man for the first time, romantically speaking, especially if you met him on an app, like a swipe app or a dating site, it's better if you meet them, first of all, in a public place with lots of people during the daytime and it's something like coffee or ice cream or something like that. There's a cheap daytime meetup. We can pay for each other, pay your own stuff to get to know if you want to go out romantically because that first romantic date has got so much pressure on it if you've never met before. I don't recommend doing that. So my recommendation is do a pre-date or a informal meet you, get to know you date before we think you want to be romantic or not. Because the first date usually has a lot of romantic overtones. And if you go on a first date that way without any idea if it's going to be worthwhile, it's going to be a really challenging time energetically. Now, some people go, oh, no, don't worry about it. I say do. Think about this as a choice. So on your first pre-date or first romantic date, if your new partner, your new, your new prospect, be it male or female, is constantly on their phone, texting, chatting, looking at stuff on their phone whilst they're on dates. I have one recommendation. Get up and leave. Yes. Get up and leave. Um, personally, and, and I've been on the receiving end of this too, so I've made mistakes before. <clears throat> but when I'm with somebody, I'm learning more repeatedly, because it's a lesson I'm learning, so I'm passing on to you, is to put my phone on vibrate, or do not disturb, or even airplane mode, so I can enjoy the person I'm with. Because if we're meeting somebody, that's using my time and their time. And if I'm wasting both of our times, there's no point in being there. And if you have that prospect on a date where your match, your new uh, uh, prospect, is doing that, they're wasting your time. Unless they're in the middle of a major um, trauma stuff where a family member's been injured, or they're dealing with stuff with family members, or something that works really challenging them, if that's you doing that, let, your per let the person know, it's like, excuse me, I have to take care of this, something important, and I'll talk about you afterwards if that's okay. If it's not okay for them, then maybe you want to leave and take care of it and reschedule the date. So just for both sides. And if the other person doesn't accept that, then you may be saying, I'm sorry, I need to take care of this, it's a priority. But if you're on social media all the time, or checking Instagram, or checking in at a location because you've met somebody on checking a location, because that's more important to you, you may want to reconsider your priorities. So that's one part. Which comes under respect, because again, it's your time and their time. Are you being respected? Now, you're in a relationship for a while. And the person you're with has a way of being. The way things they say, the way they act, the way they treat you, the way you treat your stuff. 
the way they treat the environment you both share, if you share a common space, the way they treat your family members, is extremely telling. If they don't respect you, which would be indicative because of the way they talk to you, how they describe you, how they talk about you to, your fr- to their friends, how they talk about you to your friends, how they treat your property, your stuff, your time, is indicative that if they don't respect that, then you're not being respected. Now, here's a key. If you're not res- being respected, they don't deserve you. I'll say that one again. If you're not being respected, they don't deserve you you I think you're getting this point point. and again like the first one I mentioned it may be a good time to think about not necessarily the instant but you may be thinking about leaving because why would you want to spend time in a relationship where you're being disrespected and people saying why oh, don't do that check carefully I know many many people including some clients who have been disrespected in relationships because they didn't realize the partner they got together with at the beginning was so wonderful so nice but three six months into the relationship they're being used by that person they're being demeaned by that person. They're being lied to by that person. These are all signs of disrespect. And if you're on the receiving end of that, that's two things going on. The one is that they aren't deserving of you. But secondly, you may have some homework to do. I'll talk about that, talk about that in a moment, the homework. Respect is a... It's up there. It's, it's a vital, if I may say, be so bold to say component of a healthy relationship, even friendship, frankly, business or romantic or friendships, respect is key. If you're being disrespected, there's a flaw here. And the flaw being, there's, an, there's no um, honoring on both on either side. Because the things you can respect them all you want, but if they don't respect you, it doesn't make a difference. Let me jump to the homework. I mentioned the homework just now. Your homework, if you're in a situation where you're not being respected and you're getting this more than one place, like more than one relationship, more than one person is saying things to you or treating you a certain way or, again, disrespecting, disrespecting your property, that sort of stuff, you have homework to do. And what I mean by that is I strongly suspect that in some way, shape or form, you are not respecting yourself. Oh, my God, I shocked you. I scared you. I got you upset. Like, so bear with me for a second. Generally speaking, other people respect you to the level you respect yourself. Other people love you to the level you love yourself. Other people will care about you to the level to care about yourself. It's, re- it's a mirror, basically. The world around you is a mirror backs to you how you treat yourself. So if you're not being respected by those people around you, it's possible, maybe even likely, that through whatever reason, way, shape, or form, you don't respect yourself fully. And that could have been because... You made some mistakes. Maybe you found it, you realized you'd lied about something. You felt regret about it, didn't deal with it. Maybe you just simply have felt like you, che- you cheated or did something wrong, so you feel guilty about it and you won't respect yourself because of that. If that's the case, actually, I talked about this on Friday, Thursday, Saturday. I talked about it a few days ago about dealing with um, forgiveness and also with venting out this sort of stuff. And if you want information about that, Go back and look at number three, was it 340? 336, I think it was. I have to scan through my broadcast. And again, I'll tell you when those are in a moment when you find them. Regardless of that, in the sense that if there's a challenge inside of you to respect yourself because of some rule, some belief, some false advertising you've done to yourself, it's time to change. I mentioned this before in other broadcasts, and one of the things I recommend highly is a simple active practice. And so let me put that to you now which is to, t- is to really rebuild that um, internal thermostat, the internal um, evaluation of yourself. So I've done this before and I've told you many times, but in case you haven't seen it before, this broadcast will help you with this. Is, it's a self-love practice. It's so simple, yet the power is beyond your imagining. So here goes. As I said before, and I've talked about this beyond the broadcast, if you just take five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the evening, and you look into yourself in the mirror, in privacy, in your own space, put your hands over your heart, and look in the mirror, connect eye contact with yourself, and say to yourself, I love you. And say it until you connect. And once you connect, do that for five minutes. Do it in the morning, do it in the evening. Do that for 30 days. Your self-esteem, your self-respect, your self-value will, will drastically raise. It will rise up quite dramatically. That will change things for you. 
Now, a little caveat on that. When it happens, some of the things that you're facing, as I mentioned earlier, may come to the surface more readily because you're now ready to face them. That's when it's time to do the homework, the work I was talking about in, in the previous broadcast. But let me say it this way. I talked about this on, again, I think it was Friday or Friday, or I think it was. Again, I can remember which one it was. So I think that was 3.36 in the broadcast. This is 3.40. I talked about forgiveness. Watch that broadcast. It may, it may be fundamental for your transformation and for your healing. If you haven't watched the broadcast, let me, put, let me give it to you this way. Those judgments that you're running against yourself that are lowering your own self-respect won't go away on their own accord. That respect that you truly deserve comes back to you when you start forgiving yourself for those judgments. And if you're stuck in how to do forgiveness the right quote, right way, I have two uh, worksheets I recommend. One's actually from Colin Tiffin's book, Radical Forgiveness, and the other one's the one I've created from my own background. And also has another practice that goes with it, which is how to free up the energy to get to forgiveness. So if that's challenging for you and you want to work with that, send me an email or send me a message over Facebook um, and I'll send it to you. Or if you've been watching this um, on YouTube, message over YouTube, or if you want to go to my website, you can do it this way because the offering I give you all the time, I do give you now, which is you can grab a complimentary clarity conversation with me, and in that you can ask for it as well. So you go to my website, uh, which is barrysilvey.com, in case you didn't know what it was. Click on the Let's Chat button in the navigation bar and sign up for that. And in there you can actually put in the notes there, just remind me that you want the, the, the forgiveness um, assignments. Um, oh yes, I was going to mention where you can find my other broadcast. To find yesterday's about the other red flag and then on Sunday about the general red flag conversation. No, Saturday. The general red flag conversation runs on back in day. So yesterday was another red flag test, which is, Monday, which is Sunday. Saturday was the red flag conversation. And then Friday was about forgiveness. I think that's right now. So basically, this is number 340. So 339, 38, and 37. Maybe 336? Have a look. Where you can look for these, just so you know, is on my website, which is Barry Selby. Sorry. Well, yes, you can do it there too. But let me start the other way. This is actually being done on Facebook Live, in case you haven't seen this before. Um, if you watch it on YouTube, I'll get to that in a second. So you can watch my broadcasts, all my recorded ones, on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Or on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from, Messages from the Masculine. And or on my website, which is barryselby.com, and you can click on the video blog to watch them there. This one could be a, bit, a, a game changer for you. It's not a subtle topic. It's got some depth to it. But I definitely recommend you do something um, about it. This could change your life. And you deserve to have an amazing relationship. So... I think that's about it. Self-respect is a fundamental piece. Whether you're single or in a relationship, if you're single especially, it's a good time to do that. It's to start building your own self-esteem, self-respect, self-appreciation, because you deserve it. And with that, you'll get a relationship that, that honors you as you are choosing to be. If you're in a relationship that's not working, you may want to rethink your choices. Again, I've offered you some suggestions, some guidance, and a way to get some help. I think that's a full-service broadcast. Um, Thank you for watching, by the way. And your homework, as I already mentioned, is the self-love practice. I already mentioned that. So I think I'm complete. Um, thanks for being with me, as always. I'll be back in tomorrow, number 341. I'm not sure what the topic will be yet, but I'm sure it'll be something else. Maybe another red flag test. We'll see. But this will get you started and get you moving forward. And I wish you good luck with this. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>